Okay, hopefully this is going to be a short video, guys, on calculating percent slip. You might have to do this on the test, and uh, it'll be in your homework as well, and I'm not sure if it's actually going to be on your CFQ, so we're going to look at it really quickly. And, you know, this is another one of those formulas that you're never going to have to actually apply in real life, okay? I guarantee it, but you're going to do it in school anyway, okay? And when we refer to percent slip of an AC motor, we're talking about how much, of you know, how much of its sink speed is it actually slipping? And it's a little bit hard to explain, so I'm just going to actually do it. Let's say I have a four-pole motor. Okay, and it doesn't matter if it's single phase or three phase. It's going to be the same formula. Um, and it runs at 1750 RPM. Okay, in other words, that's the nameplate value. Okay, so calculate... Calculate the percent slip. Well, in order to calculate the percent slip, we need to know the sink speed and uh, the actual speed, which is going to be the 1750, and then we're going to divide that by the sink speed. So then the question is, you know, what's the sync speed of a four pole motor at 60 hertz now we've talked about this already there's only two kinds of motors out there we could calculate it okay guys and maybe we should in fact i will up here but i want you to remember that there's only two sync speeds in real life okay at 60 hertz and one is 3600 rpm which means it's a two pole and one is 1800 rpm which is a four pole. And this is in North America, okay? Because in Europe with 650 hertz, that would be, uh, I think, uh, 3,000 and 1,500, okay, at 50 hertz. But if you don't believe me, we're going to calculate it uh, for a second. Uh, N is equal to, uh, what is it again? I can't even remember the formula right here. F times 120 over, over P, okay? And so it's 60 times 120 over uh, 4 and you can see that if I calculate that um, 60 times 120 equals divided by 4 equals 1800 rpm okay guys I, did, I told you I wasn't lying to you okay so calculate the percent slip now we know the sync speed and we have the actual speed and uh, we're gonna calculate it right here so percent slip it should be 1800 sync speed minus 1750 actual speed over 1800 which is the sync speed which is going to be 50 over 1800 and really what this formula is doing is calculating the amount it's slipping and dividing it by the sync speed okay and that's going to give you the percent it's slipping of the sync speed and you have to actually multiply this by 100 or else it's going to be in a decimal okay so if I go 50 over 1800 It comes to 0 0.027, you know, 78. And uh, if I multiply that by 100 to get that into the percentage, it's going to be 2.778%. Okay, guys? And all that is doing is calculating, you know, this particular motor is going to slip 2.778% over its, you know, per speed range, basically. All right? Because at no load, it's going to be running at really close to 1,800, very, very close, okay? And at full load, it's going to be running at 1,750, and that range is 2.778%. And so if you look at a motor, the lower the percent slip is, the you know better the motor is, really. It's going to have a more constant speed, all right, guys? So there is a formula like that um, for calculating percent slip. Uh, it's right there. I don't know why I've just said that. We just talked about that, but I think it comes up in the homework, okay, guys? So that's one thing I wanted to talk to you about. The other thing I wanted to talk to you about is motor dual voltage motors, okay? And I'm not going to write too many notes about this because you probably already know about it, but there's a section on it here, multiple voltages. And you know, if you have a dual voltage motor, for example, this one here is a motor that's 115. Uh, 
and 230 usually not usually for a single phase motor guys that is going to be you're going to be connecting your windings either in series or in parallel and so they show it here and then they show the connections okay so how it's going to be connected if it's 115 volts and this will be on the nameplate right guys and then how is it going to be connected uh, if it's 230 volts but basically what I want you to know is that and you guys hooked up a dual voltage motor it's a three phase dual voltage motor works which works the same way right basically they're going to divide the motor into two windings for the run and we're going to have our centrifugal switch in here right and then two windings for the start and right now this thing would be mo would be uh, wired high voltage right because if it was high voltage, in other words, you had 230 volts from here to here, then this one would see 115 volts, and 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 that's because they're wired in series, okay, 230 volts. And if you look at the configuration here, you'll notice that the 230 volts ties the um, you know, windings together in series. Okay, and uh, if you wanted to see that same motor wired low voltage, what you will see is the same two start winding, run windings, and the same two start windings. Here's the centrifugal switch, here's the start. And now you've just hooked it everything in parallel, and so now it's connected low voltage, okay? And that's because it's going to be, let's say, 115 for this particular machine here, which means this guy gets 115, this guy gets 115, this guy gets 115, and this guy gets 115. Okay, guys? And so I don't care if you connect the motor high voltage or low voltage, the windings themselves are going to get their rated voltage, which is 115 volts. This machine will have 115 volt windings and those windings will get 115 volts no matter if you connect it to 230 or 115 as long as you've wired it correctly okay so a lot of motors this is single phase but three phase does it the same way a lot of motors when they are rated for dual voltage meaning that you can connect them to two different voltages it will basically be wiring the thing up in series or parallel depending on whether you're connecting it high voltage or low and that's what you're doing here okay guys now there are other you know here's a dual voltage motor right here guys that is three phase and you guys are familiar with this nine lead you know Y connected terrible motor that you guys are connecting in your electronics class okay where you're either connecting it in parallel or in series depending on what you know whether you're going high or low voltage but there is a similar motor that is a delta connected motor that you are connecting the wires delta but either in parallel or in series as well okay and so I want you to be familiar with that now there's this other crazy drawing here which is a Y delta and you know because when you change a motor a a three-phase gadget from Y to Delta, the voltage on the windings change, okay? And so this is an example of a motor that could be connected 120 or 208. And in this case, I don't want to draw on my thing, but if you imagine these windings all being rated for 120, then I could connect this thing to 123 phase, and my three windings will get 120. But I could connect it to 208 three phase and still get the windings to see 120, by connecting it delta or Y instead of delta, okay? So this is a 120, 208 volt motor, uh, and you're changing the voltage by changing the winding configuration. Now, I just want to say about this that this is never done, or very rarely, as far as I know. But it is done for the purpose of low, reduced current starting, okay, guys? So if you have a Y, a delta connected motor 
So let's say this was a 600 volt motor and you would have 600 volts here. And if you just turned this on, you'd get 600 volts to the entire motor and it would start up and draw a massive amount of current if it was a large motor, guys. And so for really large motors, sometimes they start them up in Y configuration. And then once they're started in Y, they switch them over to Delta on the fly okay with contactors and the reason you would start it up Y is because if you connect this thing to 600 volts and it's Y then the 600 volt windings here would be getting 247 volts 200 347 volts while it was starting okay so you're actually reducing the voltage to the windings for startup and then once it's started and running it gets suddenly switched over to Delta and then it runs at 600 volts like it's designed to, okay? So that sometimes is done to do reduced voltage starting, okay, guys? And so I finally taught you enough stuff that you can do some of your homework, guys. And so your homework is going to be uh, Unit 5, Handout 3, AC Induction Motors, has a whole bunch of normally open questions, guys, or normally open. It has a whole bunch of multiple choice questions, okay, guys, that you can try on single phase and three phase induction motors. Come back for the next video. We're going to do some other crazy motors pretty soon, okay, guys? Unit 5, handout 3. Try it out.